praise God. Clap your hands and praise God. Come on, everybody. Praise God. Come on. Praise God. Lift up your hands on tonight. Oh, praise God. He's done so many wonderful things. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, saints.
We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. We serve a big God who's greatly to be praised. Merciful God, our Redeemer, the lifter of our head. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him this morning. He alone is worthy. Hallelujah. I woke up with a praise. Listen, I woke up with a praise. Hallelujah. Because he didn't have to do it for me this morning. Thank you, Jesus. That's why I come today to lift him up. Hallelujah. The Bible says, where there are two or three touching and agreeing in my name, he's in the midst. I need to know if I got at least two or three people that Cain would have made up mind. That Cain would have made up mind. Come on, somebody. That I will bless the Lord at all times. Lord, we thank you today. We ask that you just come on in this place. Come on as we worship him. Let us usher in the Holy Spirit in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let nothing stop you. Just usher him in. You watch it on Facebook Live. Hallelujah. Right there in your home. God said, I want to meet you right there. God said, I want to meet you right there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Lord, you are the strength of our life. You're everything. You're everything. Come on, somebody. Lord, you're everything. And we thank you today. And we glorify you today. Hallelujah. Heard a songwriter say, Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Hallelujah. That even when I'm having a bad day, God still got me covered. He brings me joy in a dark place. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we welcome you in this place. Sweet Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Just have your way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Starting us on our way. We give you praise. Because today is a new day. A fresh start. A fresh anointing. A new chapter. A new day to get it right. A day that I can change my mind. And bless you, Lord. Mm, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. Come on, you just got to get intimate with him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
thank you today, God, because my sisters, my brothers, my family, my neighbors, and even my enemies are free today. I speak against every stronghold that has had your people captive. I declare that your people are free today. So today, Lord, I just want to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my children. Come on, you got a reason to thank God for. I thank you, God, because you are yet turning things around. You are yet turning things around. You are yet restoring things. You are yet restoring things. You are yet healing. You are yet delivering. You are yet setting free. You are God. And God, we thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. the Lord saying to somebody that is going to get better in fact God said it's getting better right now restoration has come to your house hallelujah thank you Jesus well my prayer warriors there come on just lift up your hands and just give God praise thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Listen, 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 listen. I watched the news and the news report is saying that there's 4,000 people a day dying from this dreadful coronavirus. I pray for that man, that woman that's in the hospital right now. How did she come there? Come on, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. Because if you got 4,000 people dying per day in seven days, that's 28,000. God, I pray for that brother. I pray for that mother, that father, that son, that daughter that's laying in the hospital room. Those nurses and doctors are fighting constantly trying to keep them alive. Lord, some of them are induced in a medical induced coma tubes down their throats. God, I'm asking that you would turn it around right now. 
the day that you have formed Adam out of the clay come on somebody somebody say turn it come on somebody say turn it come on somebody Lord come on somebody say turn it Lord turn it around listen on the sixth day he said let us make man in our image and out of the clay he formed man and with his own breath he breathed life into man God we need for you to breathe for that woman that man your children right now that are fighting we need for you to fight for them we need for you to fight for them God we need for you to breathe for them God send your Holy Spirit in the hospitals hallelujah that's right send your power Lord thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I declare that every doorpost in the hospital is covered by the blood right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I declare that every doorpost come on somebody you need to spiritually paint that doorpost the doorpost of our homes the doorpost of the hospitals the doorpost of the court system the oh my god hallelujah come on somebody that we rebuke death right now that death would not get the victory come on somebody hallelujah God has already won God has already won God has already won. Come on, somebody. God has already. God has already. Look, 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 look. While our loved ones are fighting and the nurses are holding their hands, God, you have your way. But God, there are many other people that if when we turn the chapter from this, God, there's still people battling cancer. There's still people battling diabetes, heart condition, mental condition. There's still people battling, hallelujah, frustration. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I not only cover the doorposts of every believer with the blood, I cover everybody's doorposts that's battling any condition with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've been hearing people when I haven't seen them in a while, I say, how you doing? And they say, whoa. I've been stressed out beyond measure, beyond strength. I've been frustrated to the point where every day I feel like it's going to be the end. But right now, I declare in the name of Jesus that there's a new chapter in your life.
I lift my little cousin up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, who's still a baby, a toddler, a baby. Thank you, Jesus. The grandchild of the Davis family, we lift her up right now. We lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. They got to fight that battle right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, Pastor Terry, don't you give up? You've always been a fighter. You keep on fighting. You keep on fighting. You may not got to touch anything. God said, matter of fact, don't touch nothing. God said, just keep on fighting. Hallelujah. Your praise is good enough. Trying to say is that 
It's a new move. You've been moving in all other kind of different, different directions, but God said, now it's a new move. It's a new move. It's a new move. You've been looking at the chessboard, and it looks like your opponent is always winning, but God said, it's a new move. Oh, my God. Come on, praise team. God said, it's a new move. Hallelujah. It's a new move. Man, you better get something to drink. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's bless him in this place. How many know that we serve a great God? How many know that we serve a great God? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. 
you here Jesus we welcome you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I lift my hands in total adoration to you you reign on the throne for you are God and God alone 
Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I know y'all know it, so just help us sing it. I lift my hands. I lift my hands in total. And while you're singing it, just listen to the words. Hallelujah. You reign. You reign. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, let's lift it up and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship I worship and adore to tell you just want to tell you Lord I, Lord, I love you more, more than anything. anything come on you gotta say it like you mean it we gonna hey. say it again say I love you Jesus I love you Jesus I worship and yeah. I worship and adore Oh, 
Cause you saved me, you saved me, Jesus, yeah. I love you more than anything. You're so good, you're so kind, you're amazing, Jesus, Lord, I, Lord, I love you more than anything. Because you still love me. When I was ready to give up, you still love me. When I was ready to give up, Lord, I love you more than anything. Now let's bless him in this place. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Jesus. Come on, where my worshipers? I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more. Come on, if you love him more, won't you just stand to your feet and give God your best praise? Somebody say 10. Ten. And they opened their mouths together and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priests. 
But as they were walking, healing was taking place. Because the Bible says we walk by what? We walk by faith and not by sight. But there was one person that was one that had the audacity to say this is just not enough that I feel a transformation as I was walking I can't allow that as he was walking he felt the transformation and he ran back the Bible says and he fell on his face we preach that during Thanksgiving but we can preach that during any season because when God do something for you new when everybody else has abandoned you when people called you crazy when people didn't want to do anything else with you he said go Listen, listen, while they were talking about you yeah. Yeah. on Facebook in code, God deciphered it for you and said, this is not the friend you want to. God said, you got to defriend that person because that person. So he comes back. And it was a Samaritan, and he knew that it was unrighteous against Jewish custom that if you were dealing with any kind of leprosy, you was not to come in contact with anybody. And if you would come in contact with people, you would have to cover your face and put yourself to shame by saying, unclean, unclean, unclean. But when this one man felt the transformation, when he felt sickness leave his body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says he's run back and he fell on his face and he thanked the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you because you could have ignored my request. You could have said no, but you said yes. Listen, some of y'all are here because God said yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come on, y'all need to praise God. Yeah. God said yeah. yes, Hallelujah. you will live. God said yes, you will over. Yes, yes. That's why I can stand here today and I can say, I love you, Jesus. Yes. More than anything. Hallelujah. More than all the riches in the land, God. I love you more than anything. More than anything. Hallelujah. I love you more than anything. Woo. I love you more than anything. I, I just feel God going to do something for somebody, not only in this building, but those of you that are watching Facebook Live in your bedrooms, in your living rooms, with your family. Hallelujah. Something God is about is to boot. Oh my God. There's Something a shifting. There's a shifting in the spirit. In the There's a shifting in the spirit. Yeah. There's a shifting in the yeah. 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 Yes, God. We say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes to you, Lord. We say yes, we to, say you, yes to you, Jesus. We say yes to Jesus. Come on, experience it, experience it, experience it, experience it. Oh! Yeah. Hey, 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 hey! There's a shifting. 
I know you're trying to see it. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Feel the shifting. I got to praise. Hallelujah. I got to praise and I got to get it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo. Listen. Listen. That while it's shifting, God said, don't wait for it to hit you. God said, you need to praise him right now. God said, don't wait for it to knock you on your behind. You need to praise him right now. Just, oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. Hallelujah. Listen, when we lift our hands, it's a form of surrendering to God. It's not lifting your hands in defeat. Come on now. But you're lifting your hand and surrendering to God. So that God can fill you. So that God can restore you. So that God can fix you. Oh my God. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you, Lord. With my hands lifted up, I will give you praise. With my hands lifted up, I will say yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that a boss sata. He sata na bossi. He's here. Woo! Yes, Lord. Somebody came here miserable. But right now your miserable attitude has turned into a yes. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody came huh, with the option of this being your last opportunity. But now that's changed huh, to a yes. God said he'll turn your grief into victory. That's when you got to shout. Hallelujah. I'm not defeated. I just got the victory. Hallelujah. In his holy temple, praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. For the Lord Thank you, Jesus. I am literally right here. Even while I'm standing here, I am seeing God's working right now. Come on, somebody. God is working right now. Come on, God is working right now. Hey, glory! 
I see him working. He's still working. After all the hell I've been through, he's still working. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Mm. Y'all trying to start something over there. Woo. God is working right now. God is working right now. God is working right now. Can you see him? Can you see him? God is working right now. God is working right now. God is working right now. Can you see him? Come on, can you see him? Come on, come on. God is working right now. God is working right now. God is working right now. Can you see him? Can you see him? God is moving right now. God is moving right now. God is moving right now. Can you feel him? Can you feel him? God is moving right now. God is moving right now. Can you feel him? Can you feel him? Come on, praise him. Oh, yeah. Praise him. 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 God is moving right now. God is moving right now. God is moving right now. Can you feel him? Can Can you feel feel him? Hey! God God is is working working right now. Yeah. God is working right now. God is working right now. Can you see him? Can you see him? Hey! God is working right now. God is working right now. God is working right now. Listen. Can you see him? Can you see him? I hear the Lord saying he's lifting the spirit of anxiety off of you right now. Somebody been dealing with anxiety, but God said I'm lifting it right now. Hallelujah. He's working right now. He's moving. He's moving. He's He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. Receive it. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. Receive it. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. Just receive it. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. Just receive it. Just receive it. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. He's healing. Just receive it. 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 Open up your heart. Just receive it. Open up your mind. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. God is doing something. Just receive it. God is moving. Just receive it. God is working. Just receive it. 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 It's mine. It's mine. That healing. It's mine. That deliverance. It's mine. That healing, it's mine. That deliverance, it's mine. Regulated mindset, it's mine. Hallelujah. Woo. Somebody shout, it's mine. It's mine. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's yours. It's yours. Now give God a praise. It's mine. It's mine. It's yours. It's mine. It's mine. It's yours. It's yours. Yes.
Yes, Lord. It's mine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we worship and praise the Lord, let us give God our best hand praise. Come on. Hallelujah. And just, uh, I, I am just so grateful for God and the victory is has already been won over my life. He got me. He got me covered. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I know that that's so much that has been going on, but we have the victory. And I am so grateful to be able to know in my heart that if I got it, my wife got it. Come on, somebody. I know that if I'm standing here right now amongst God's people, y'all got it. Come on, somebody. Come on, y'all need to give God praise. See, when, 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 when I wake up on Sunday mornings and it's different because Saturday gets rough. But Sunday, while everything is going on on Saturday and Friday and Thursday and Wednesday and go on and on and on, hallelujah, I'm not surrendering to defeat in anything that happens. Because every day I give God the praise. But when I get here with my friends, my family, we all can celebrate and stomping the devil's head in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because hallelujah, the devil is defeated and God will be exalted. Whew. Listen. Listen, I want to say this before I forget. Next week, Sunday, we're going to be doing communion. Um, so those of you that are that watches via Facebook Live, you can either go and purchase you some cups, which they probably don't even have. Now, you probably got to order them. But get you some crackers and some cranberry juice amongst you and your family members in your home. And if we partake in it here, we want you to partake in it while you're at home. Hallelujah. We can all do this together. Hallelujah. I'm believing God for a radical experience, amen. I feel that this year is already getting better. Anybody feel like I feel right now? I feel like a songwriter that sung the song, I feel no ways tired. Hallelujah. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Hallelujah. That's how I feel today. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to read the scripture and then we're going to raise the offering, amen. And we're going to get another selection from the out, this outstanding praise team. Amen. Let's give it up for them. Come on. Come on. Let's give it up for them. And so often we, so often we praise God for the praise team. But let's praise God for the musicians too also in the house. And I, I, I. I I, I wanted to say this to the musicians, to all of you guys, that God said that give him your all. Every ounce of who you are, all of your gifts and talents that he placed in you. And watch every door open in your life like never before. Amen. Every ounce, Amen. every ounce. God said, don't give them nothing less but the best. Amen. Hallelujah. And all, all the mother doors, all the mother doors, God said, I open them so wide Amen. that even a blind man to see they're open. Come on, somebody. Give God praise in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless Thank you, Lord. Jesus. 
Hallelujah. We're going to stand for the reading of the word on this morning. I want to get it because sometimes our computers have a glitch. And I ain't never heard that a paper Bible ever having a glitch unless it is missing a page. Come on, somebody. <laughs> your Bible, keep your, keep your Bible, keep your Bible. Hallelujah. Because when your phone and your tablets are having problems, hallelujah, you can always go back to the Holy Bible. Hallelujah. It'll never have a glitch. <laughs> the pages might be wrinkled. Hallelujah. But it ain't got no glitches. Hallelujah. Let us read this in concert. Amen. Matter of fact, just repeat after me. And Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto them, Answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. For verily, For verily I say unto you, I say unto you, that whosoever, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, shall say unto this mountain. I like that part because he said that whosoever, whosoever. he's not referring it to just believers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, whosoever. If you never believe God for anything, he said, whosoever. So say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and, be thou cast into the and sea. shall not doubt, and shall not doubt in, his heart, in his heart, but shall, but shall believe, believe that those things, that those things which, he saith, which he saith shall come to pass. Shall come to pass. He, shall he shall have, have whatsoever, whatsoever he, saith. he saith. I like that word because it is, it is, it is, it is very powerful. He said whatsoever. He saith. If what you say is lining up with God, you're going to have it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye should have them. That's a very powerful thing right there. It says, believe. When you're praying, you have to believe. So many people just, Lord, I thank you for the house. Thank you for the car. Blah, 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 and just going about their day. I pray today. No, 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 no. Did you believe what you said? Come on, man. That's the thing right there. Do you believe that you asked God for that house today? Do you believe if God gave you the house today, would you jump and shout? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to pray like it's happening right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. And the word of God is blessed. Come on, let's give God a great big hand praise. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to be blessed. But I want to I want to say some while we're preparing. Amen. We're going to follow the direction. You have a testimony? Okay, okay. All right, we'll get your testimony right after the offering, all right? Okay. And here's the here is is something that's so powerful that that when we deal with any kind of depression. God will bring people in your life to say the right thing and do the right thing at the right moment to help pull you out. See, here's the thing about being in a place where you feel that there's no help. I remember reading a story where there was a man who was hanging off the cliff and he heard a voice saying, let go, I'll catch you. Come on, you're going to catch this. I want you to catch this. He was hanging off the cliff, and he said, what you mean, let go? And he said, let go, and I'll catch you. And he's like, how many of y'all is it going, it's down and it catch me? He said, I'm by myself. Just let go and catch me. Pretty much what the person was saying was just have faith. And let go. 
and I'll catch you. See, so often we, we hesitate on letting go of the very thing that has been keeping us from allowing God to use us in ways that he needs to use us. We hold on to things that would oppress us when God is trying to just relieve us of that. And all he's saying is just, let go and I'll catch you. So here's, here's, here's the moral of the story that when the man finally made up in his mind to let go, it wasn't that someone caught him. It was that he was already on the ground. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God is saying, let go. I'll catch you. Because what looks like a death sentence, what looks like a tragedy about to happen, God said, if you just let it go, I'll catch. Come on, somebody. God said, I'll catch you. So I'm saying this to somebody that God will send people in your life to catch you, to usher you through that, to navigate. Y'all remember when I was preaching about the waves and the sister, the young, the surfer was navigating him as he was carrying the woman to shore. She was helping navigate him through the waves to get him back to shore. God has put people in place in your life to help navigate you through the storm that you're in. Hallelujah. Because you're facing it. They're standing outside watching it come, but they can navigate you. Look, do this and do that. Oh my God, I'm going to say that. But come on, give God some praise in here. Hallelujah. Everyone standing. Go ahead, musicians. Y'all can play. Hallelujah. We're going to follow the direction of our deacon. Amen. musicians for that right there. We knew what y'all was playing. <laughs> y'all couldn't hide nothing. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look, a lot of y'all missed it. You know, my wife, she um, was playing something on the computer and she went back and found something real good and it was real good music. It was I mean, that, that old school stuff that really got in your spirit, that got you going, that got you that got you shouting hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just, just, I mean, even, e oh, hallelujah. Just, amen. That's right. Hallelujah. 
that'll move you from your seat. Hallelujah. You could just dance. Hallelujah. Just shout. Oh, bless the Lord in here on today. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand to our feet as we bless the offering on this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all believe in God for something greater this year? Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to point your hand right here toward this basket on this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to get your mind on the very thing that you need God to bless you with on today. Now, note, I know for many of us, it ain't always about getting a financial blessing. It could just mean God heal my marriage, heal my relationship, touch my son, my daughter. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, hallelujah. God, I sold this seed for my son today. I sold this seed for my brother today, God. I sold this seed for my mother today, God. I sold this seed for the healing of your people today. Whatever it is, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you and we praise you for every giver. And for those that didn't have to give but just came and touched this basket in belief, hallelujah. I'm asking that, God, that you will bless them from the crown of the head to the sole of their feet. That, God, that you will give them the desires of their hearts, oh God, according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Hallelujah. I want you all to repeat that to me. I know like some of y'all want to sit down real quick. Hallelujah. But how many of y'all need God to enlarge some stuff for you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all believe in God to take you from where you at and expand you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As we travel the highways, we see large fields with just open land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you can believe God, just to expand your territory to vacant lots and Thank, oh my God, hallelujah, just expand you into new territory, hallelujah, when you can believe God in that kind of expansion. See, here's the thing about believing God for enlargement. It's still a small thing. See, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and even his ways are higher than our ways. So when we think that is big enough for us. God said it's not big enough for me, so I'm going to make it bigger. Hallelujah. So I want you to repeat after me. Lord, enlarge my territory. Come on, expand those arms. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I need a little room. I need a little room. Lord, expand my territory. Come on, somebody, one more time. Lord, expand my territory. Now, won't God do it? Won't God do it? Come on, one more time. Won't God do it? Now, give God a praise in this place. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Honey, God is already expanding our territory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Come here, we, we, we're going to touch and agree on that. Come on. Touch and agree on that. Hallelujah. He's expanding our territory. Hallelujah. Woo! Look, we have a testimony. Then after our testimony, amen, from Sister T. And we call her by that name T because I don't want to pronounce her name wrong. 
and then she didn't had her name pronounced wrong probably all of her life. Hallelujah. But let's give God a praise as she come. You can take the mic, hit the button right down that mic. Hallelujah. Go stand with your wife, Minister Harris. to the doctor last week and I saw a specialist and um, he asked me how long I had this problem. I said, I've been having it for a while. But thank God, thank God I have surgery. God is good on the mess of all I've been through, just losing the knees, but God is still good. Amen. Praise Lord. <laughs> Amen. Let's give God a great big hand praise. And look, um, we want to keep those of you that are going to be having surgery, those of you that are dealing with anything, we want to keep, we'll keep you guys lifted up in prayer. And I just want to let you know that whatever you're dealing with, God is going to pull you through this too. Amen. Amen. Let us give God a great big hand. Praise. Matter of fact, let us stand to our feet and receive our praise team. Amen. Our choir. Amen. They all that in above. Amen. Sing back up with me. Yeah. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice. Thanks of God. Put your hands together in this place. Higher this way, yeah, yeah. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will rejoice and be glad. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Our way. Hey. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many came with a yes on their hearts today? We say yes, Lord, yes. We say yes, Lord, yes. Hallelujah, God, with no resistance. God, you are welcome. Hallelujah. You're welcome here, not in this place, but in me, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. With 
with no resistance lord you are welcome we say yes lord yes our songs are rising in your direction we say yes lord yes we will wait on you we will wait say with no resistance with no resistance Lord you are welcome we say yes Lord yes our songs are rising our songs are rising in your direction we say yes Lord With no resistance, Lord, you are welcome. With no resistance, you are the let of me. Lord, you are welcome. We say yes, we Lord. Say yes Lord, yes. Oh, our songs are rising. Our songs are rising. In your, In your direction. We say yes, Lord. We say part is just a simple call and response hallelujah and say your glory your glory we want it we want it your prayer your prayer we want we want it your spirit your spirit we want it 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 your glory we want it we want it your prayer your prayer we want it. Your spirit. We want it. 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 Your prayer, 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 your prayer
came for a word on today. Amen. Come on, put your hands together if you came for a word. Now, the word brings about help to those that desire that word. And I believe in my heart if you came hungry today, you're going to get fed today. Amen. Ain't nobody going into a golden corral just, just, just not to get fed. You going in there to get full, ain't you? When you come to, when you come to church on Sunday, you want to get an overdose of fullness. Amen. Hallelujah. Over full. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember going out to eat once and I got so full I couldn't drive. You ever been that full? Don't, don't know what I'm talking about right <laughs> It hurt it to sit down. Hallelujah. But when you really are seeking God, there is no feeling like being filled with God's power in his presence. Hallelujah. Woo. Because even when you will to be quiet, it's just like fire set up in your bones hallelujah even when you will to sit down it's just like fire that when you come home before a word god is ready to set your soul on fire i have i'm not going to preach this morning next week sunday i'll be starting another series of messages amen so when you come next week there's going to be a change around the pulpit up here and I'm going to start a series of messages about the open door. Somebody say the open door. So those of you that are watching Facebook Live and that's going to join us, we're going to be talking a series of messages about the open door. Amen. So a door will be here. And by the end of that door being here, there'll be a gate. Hallelujah. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet with the gate, but the door will be here. Amen. But God showed me a gate. It ain't got to be no big gate, but just enough to give you a vivid imagination to manifest something in your life that you need to do 
physically and mentally and spiritually. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Look, I want you to stand to your feet. I ask this great man of God, Pastor Charles, to preach on today. Lately, I've been seeing him preach and, and sing, and I've seen such a fire in him. And a lot of times, I'm going to put it like this, a lot of times when a lot of us feel this on the inside of your gut, you feel God, you, you feel the move of God in spiritually on the inside, but we really don't do anything about it. And the problem is, all it takes is a spark. I feel that today somebody that came ready to be ignited. Come on, somebody. Anybody came to be ignited today? I feel God got a spark for you today. I don't know who it's for, but God got a spark. Hallelujah. So that you can ignite. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and receive Pastor Charles Emery. Hallelujah. Boy, I tell you, I'm having a good time today. I don't know about y'all. I'm just praising my own self through some things today. Because I tell you, when you really want God to do something in your life, get into praise. But if you want an intimate move of God, get into worship. Because I guarantee God will show up just when you need him at the right time. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. So I want you to go to Psalm 37. This has just been in my spirit all week long, Psalm 37. I'm just going to read a few scriptures in here, and then I'm going to do what God instructs me to do and sit down. Amen. But before we go into the scripture, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for your presence in this place today. We thank you for the fire of your spirit that's moving in the atmosphere. We thank you, Lord God, that the anointing is stirring up the hearts of the believers, oh God, to walk by faith and not by sight. We thank you, Lord God, that the enemy is being pushed aside, being trampled on, being stormed down, God. We thank you that your spirit, God, is moving in such a capacity that our hearts cannot contain it all. But, Father, we want to praise you anyhow because with our finite minds, oh God, we don't measure up. With our own iniquities and sinful ways, we can never rise to your standards. But because of your grace, woo, your grace and your mercy, God, provided the access that we can come into your presence, God, to tell you thank you. And today, God, make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, my heart the tablet of stone, put the word of God engraved upon of God to speak from the oracles of God, the rhema word, a seasoned word that would challenge us, that would encourage us, that would stir us up, oh God, that would provoke us to come into your presence. And we thank you for the shepherd of the house, oh God. We thank you for his wife. We thank you for his family. We thank you for the divine favor that's rest upon his life, oh God. That everything he touched, oh God, is blessed. You said, God, when you receive a prophet, in the name of a prophet, you shall receive the prophet reward. And I thank you, Lord God. Not only is the shepherd, but he's the prophetic man of God. Father God, because of that, Father, everyone that's connected to him, God, receive divine favor and the blessings upon blessings upon their children and their children from the generation to the next generation. It keeps on moving because you keep doing great things. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 37, beginning verse 1, it says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall be so cut down like the grass and wither as the green herbs. Verse 3, Trust in the Lord. And do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 4 Delight thyself also in the Lord, 
and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Verse 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. Because the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Verse 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Verse 9, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. You may be seated. If I was to have a subject, it would be God's promise to overcome your enemy in your life. God's promise to overcome the enemy in your life. So a lot of times when we're faced with enemies, we try to retaliate when they do wrong to us because we take the matters in our own hand instead of trusting in God. If you read the scripture in the, in new, in, in the NIV, not NIV, but in the New Living Translation, verse 1 said, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. Don't worry. Many times we're worrying about the things the enemy does to us. He sent people on purpose to attack you. But we act like it's something strange. When the enemy comes against you, in James chapter 1, he said, Think it not strange when the fiery darts of the enemy come to try your faith. We have to have some attacks in our lives. I'm going to tell you why. You're like, what do you mean we got to have attacks? The reason why God allow the enemy to oppose you, to attack you, to buffet you, to harass you, is to stir up the faith inside of you, to depend upon God, to defend you. Hear what I just said? God will allow the enemy to harass you, to buffet you, to hurt you, to do many different things, to destroy you, in order to stir up your faith in you, to depend on God. We depend on everything but God when the enemy comes in. But the Bible tells us, Isaiah pro prophesied about it. He said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard against him. You know what he's talking about? Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Because when you start worrying about what evildoers are doing, you begin to ponder those things in your mind till you mess yourself up mentally. Torment comes into your mind. Struggle seems worse than what they really are. Habits and addiction begin to control you. Those are enemies. Because the enemy knows the greatest attack I can do and harm you with is this thing right here. Our mind. So he said, don't worry. Don't fret. Don't be dismayed. Don't run in terror. Don't get fearful. But you got to keep on trusting on God. He said, or envy those who do wrong. You, you know what? Sometimes we envy people when they do us wrong. They can not only do us wrong, but it seems like everything in their life is going well. And then my life is all messed up. So we get into a place of envy. We get to turn on other people because I'm upset. I want you to be upset. I want you to be upset. So I got to get a, a band of people to get into a grip with me to keep this argumental spirit going on. So the enemy knows if I can create an argument of a something so minute, I can take a molehill and turn it to a mountain. So he knows if I can attack your filthy thinking to get you to turn contrary to God's word, to think against God's word, to fight against God's word, the flesh wars against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. Why? He said these two are envious against each other. The Holy Spirit is envious of the enemy coming against you. So the Holy Spirit said, oh no, I can't let this happen. 
I see the plan he's trying to do in your life. I know what he's trying to bring you to your demise. I know what he's doing, plotting and conniving things, sending people your way to have a M.O. to destroy you. So I know what's going on. So the Holy Spirit said, nope, on the inside of them, I'm going to stir up a praise. Woo! Well, I felt that. <laughs> He said, I'm going to stir up a praise inside of them so when the enemy comes to attack them, they're going to praise me. But in the process, check this out. When you begin to praise God, you, you tap into the portals of heaven. God opens up the windows of heaven. So you know what? I hear my child crying down there. The enemy's attacking him in this area. He's doing this over there. But I got to come out. I got to step out in the midst of them because I see what's going on. I got to deliver them. Woo! That's what God does. That's why he said, don't envy the envy. Don't envy your enemies. Don't, don't, don't even worry about your enemy. He said, for like grass. So I love this part. You, you, you cut your grass, right? You know how the grass keeps springing up every time you cut it and it rain, get a heavy rain, it comes back even more stronger and longer. Then you get some weeds pop up in there, some dandelions pop up in there. God said, your enemy, he wants to conceal you. So if you ever been to a yard and the grass grew so tall, you can't even see past the grass to see the house. The enemy does the same thing in God's people. He'll plant things in your life that he know is going to sprout from a seed that's going to become a tree in your life to block your vision, to block your purpose, to block the plan of God from working in your life. So when he does that, God said, that's okay. He said, for like grass, they shall soon fade away. I love that part. Anything that fades away becomes invisible. So you can't see it no more. So it disappears. God said, don't worry about your enemy. He's going to fade away. He said, like a spring flowers. I love flowers. I love plants. And he says, like spring flowers, they will soon wither. You know what? I thought about this. I said, God, you're something. Because you created the flower. You gave them their beauty. You gave their delicacies. You provide for the flower. You give it everything it needs to sustain the flower. Check, that, check where I'm going now. So everything a flower needs, God provides. So in the process of providing, he says, you know what? The enemy, I'm going to cause his flower to fade away. So I'm going to cause it to wither. In other words, the thing that the enemy thought that was in your life that he's going to control and manipulate you with, God says, I'm going to cause that thing to begin to wither away. You ever seen a leaf on a plant? How if you don't give it the proper nourishment, it begins to turn yellow, then it turns brown, and what happens? It falls off. I have this jade vine, and I, it, took me, it took me like three years to learn how to take care of it. And as I begin to pray, I said, Lord, how come this plant keep dying? Every time I do what I'm supposed to do, it still keep dying. Guess what happened? I overwatered it too much. You can get too much of something, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. God says a little sin in your life begins to multiply in your life because you keep wanting more and more and more and more because it becomes an abundance of sin in your life and it destroys you. I got all this from spirit today, y'all. <laughs> God is amazing. But then he goes on. He said, trust. I thought about trust. A man, a man of God spoke over 20 years ago a message. He was talking about the edifice of a building. He said, when you begin to build a building, there's a center beam that you would put in the middle of that building to erect the roof. He says, and that center beam is called a trust. He said, that trust, when it's planted in the right place, in the right position, it's going to do what it's called to do. It's going to protect and going to provide the building, the structure, so when the other pieces and components come together and you build a building. If you don't put the trust in it and you try to put the walls up, all the different things around that, without the trust, what's going to happen? It's going to fall in. God said the same thing about us. He said, trust in the Lord and do good. So your total dependency, 
needs to be on God. And as you begin to take pleasure and satisfaction in God, said, he said, he will give you. This is verse 4. four. He said, he'll give you desires of your heart. But before that, he said, then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Sometimes we're not prospering because we're in the wrong land. Sometimes you're not prospering because you're doing the wrong thing. If God then instructs you to be in a certain place in a certain season and do a certain thing, you're in the wrong place. Therefore, it will not prosper. So God says, take delight. I don't know about you, but I'd rather take delight in the Lord than things of the world. Because things of the world is, is temporary. Just like I, I love lemon rain pie. I can take delight in lemon rain pie. Why? Because I love the flavor. I love the way it looks. I love, love the way it feels in my belly. So as God began to give this to me, he said, well, we, why don't we do the same thing with his word? Because when you take the light in the Lord, it means you got to get in the word of God. And the word of God got to get inside of you to begin to satisfy and fill you up with everything you need to sustain you. <laughs> Verse 5. He said, commit everything you do to who? The Lord. Commit. Give it to him. Don't hold it back. Don't refrain from it. Don't, don't relent. He said, Give everything to him that you want him to do in your life. In order for God to do something in your life, you got to give him something. Many of us want businesses. You want a better job. You want a car, a better house. Well, it doesn't matter what you want, but what are you giving God? I want God's goods. I want his benefits, but I really don't want God. Think about it. We do it all the time. Because we find so many things in the world that appeases our flesh. So we get comfortable. We hunger for those things. We desire those things. And so God says, when you commit, that means to be faithful. Commit don't mean I'm going to be committed today, then tomorrow I'm going to let, let you go. He ain't talking about the roller coaster syndrome where I'm up and I'm down, I'm up and I'm down. The roller coaster syndrome will keep you out of the will of God. I used to be like that. I'm in one day. I'm out the next day. I'm up one day, high in the spirit. Then now I'm down in the spirit. Why? When you take your mind off of him, everything the enemy does in your life will bring you to a place of your demise because he knows what he needs to do to destroy your life. But then he says, trust him. And he will. He didn't say it's a possibility. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say on conditions. He didn't say on circumstances. He didn't say none of that. He says, trust him. So in the process of you trusting in him, God is trusting in you. Ain't that something? You trust in God, God trusts in you. Because he knows that your heart, where your heart is, he knows what's going to draw your attention to him or what's going to turn you away. So God said, when you trust in me, then, then I, I guarantee as you're trusting me, I'm trusting you. And not only am I trusting in you, but yet I'm guiding you. I'm showing you the path I set before you, the things I know that are going to build you up upon your most holy faith as you pray in the Holy Ghost, the things are going to stir you up with fire on the inside. So the Holy Ghost fire is an unquenchable fire. And that fire has an intense heat. And when you get in contact with the fire of the Holy Ghost, the next person touch you, they catch on fire. The person next to them catch on fire. The person next to them catch on fire. Because the fire keeps on burning. Woo. Glory to God. Then he says, he will make your innocent radiate. Like the dawn, innocence. God knows when you're innocent. He knows when you're prideful. He knows when you're stubborn. He knows when you're being ignorant. He knows everything about us. He says when you're innocent 
He said, it was radiant like the, the dawn. In other words, like the sun coming up. He said, I'm going to cause the light to shine in you so intense to where you begin to see that the radiance of the Holy Spirit is rising up on the inside. Let praise arise and your enemies be scattered. And in the process, he said, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. The sun is at its brightest at noonday. God said, your justice, your defense, your protection. And he said, everything the enemy brought against you, thought he going to stop you. God said, I'm going to call some justice to take place in your life to show that you're innocent. When God says you've been just walking in justice, he said, I acquitted you. To every accusation, every charge the enemy thought he brought against you to stop you, God says, you know what? I'm not looking at all that anymore. I don't see that. You know why? Jesus paid the price. If Jesus paid the price, God said, I see the blood. And I see the blood of Jesus that covered you, that took your sin and your lawless deeds and nailed it to the cross that when he died, you rose with him when he rose again from the dead. So God says, verse 7, be still in the presence of the Lord. And wait patiently for him to act. Hear what I just said. Be still. Don't get in a hurry. Don't try to make a shortcut. Don't try to do it your way. But he says, be still in the presence of the Lord. God says to Moses, he said, be still and know that I am God. When you get into a place of stillness, you ever seen the water in an ocean or a lake when it's still? It's calm. It's no waves. It's no billows. Why? Because it's still. The Holy Spirit on the inside of you will cause you to be still. That so when the enemy comes against you and begins to speak all kind of lies and vandalize your name, God says, don't worry about that because I will cause you to be still. And when you wait patiently, that's a whole other message by itself. Waiting patiently. Because God, sometimes he takes too long. I need my breakthrough right now. I don't need it tomorrow. I don't need it the day after. I need it right now. I need my financial breakthrough right now. I need my, my miracle. I need my healing. I need all this stuff right now. Sometimes God will let you stay in your condition long enough to get your attention. And in the process of getting your attention, God said, then I will act. Sometimes we try to rush God. God, if you don't heal my mama right now, God, I ain't going to trust you no more. God, if you don't raise up my daddy off a of sick bed, I ain't going to trust you no more. Why? Because I'm in a hurry. But God says, don't be in a hurry. He said, don't worry about evil people who prosper. We all know somebody in our lives. So that they get everything they want. Every time you turn around, they got a new car. Every time they turn around, they got a better job. Every time they turn around, they got promotion. And it seems like God just passed me by. The song says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others yet are calling, do not pass me by. We cry out to God. It seemed like God turned a deaf ear. It's like he passed you by. And you said, I done did what you told me to do, God. I, I, done, I done passed it. I done prayed. I, I done applied for the position. I done did everything I'm supposed to do. And I'm trusting you, God. But it seemed like you passed me by. God says, sometimes I'll prevent you from getting something you want because it's not my will. If it's not God's will, God will let that thing pass you by because he knows it's going to cause you to become arrogant, haughty, and prideful. God's going to prevent that thing from happening in your life. And then he says, or fret or worry about their wicked schemes, the plots, the conniving things they do behind the scene to hurt you. Your enemy, every day you wake up in the morning, is plotting and scheming against you. Because he knows if I can stop you when you first get up in the morning to make your day miserable, 
I could call you have a wretched day all day. But God says, don't fret about the wicked schemes. But then he says, stop being angry. In Ecclesiastes, in one of the writings, it says, do not be hasty to get angry. For anger rests in the bosom of fools. Is there any fools in the house of God? No. God didn't create fools. That's his children. The enemy would make you become a fool to get you angry. Because he knows if I can send the right person with the right words, the right thing they do, it's going to tick you off. But God says, stop being angry. Then he said, turn from your rage. Don't run to the rage. Just because they talk about you, don't mean you got to retaliate. Just because they came to you harshly and, and disgraded you, God said, you ain't got to respond that same way. Just because people mistreat you, don't mean I have the right to do them the same way they done me. Because if I'm a child of God and I'm walking in love, I have to demonstrate. Love is an action word. So love, it doesn't keep track of wrongdoings. Love does not envy. Love does not hurt. Love does not hate. So when the enemy comes against you through certain people with their wicked schemes and their slandering words, God says, don't you worry about it. Don't lose your temper. It only leads to harm. Sometimes we lose our temper and we say some things we know we shouldn't say. And God says, I know your heart. I know your mind. I know your desires. I know what they're doing to you. I know what's going on around you. I know what's going on inside of you. But he tells us this. Do not lose your temper. When you lose your temper, we make matters worse than what they really were in the beginning. We magnify the problems bigger than our God. But the Bible tells us, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together because in the process of magnifying God, God shows up in the nick of time. He calls your enemy to be put into a fight. He called the things they're doing to you to stop. God said, I will cover you with my feathers. And under my wings will I protect you. Why? Because I am your God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. God promises, don't worry about your enemy, how big your enemy is. Because I'm bigger than your enemy. I'm greater than the adversary that comes against you. You don't have to fight. Because I will fight for you, says the Spirit of God. God promises that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Every tongue that rises against you, God will condemn. God says, don't worry about your enemy because I'm going to destroy the enemy right before your face because I am God and I'm God all by myself. He says, I am God. I created you for my glory. And in the process, I put my spirit inside of you and my power is working on the inside and it's manifesting on the outside. All you got to do is walk in the word of God. When you walk in the word of God, you walk in the power of God. And the power of God silence the mouth of the enemy. Hallelujah. Don't worry about your adversary. So they will soon disappear. I don't know about you, but I expect God. When the enemy comes against me, I go to Abba Father. I go to my daddy, daddy. I say, daddy, this going on in my life. Daddy, I can't seem to handle it. The things seem to be bigger than what I can handle. But I know you did it for David. You did it for Daniel and the lion's den. You did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I know you won't abandon me now. I know you won't turn your back on me right now. But God, I'm calling on that great name. Come I know what I'm calling that name. The enemy got to run in terror. The enemy got to flee against me. Because God promises. I will be a shield around about you. I will protect you. It said the name of the Lord. 
is a strong tower. Just his name alone has great power. Just his name alone is a shelter in a storm. Just his name alone is your healing balm of Gilead. Just his name alone is your anointing salve in your sick of your body. God says his name alone leads you to victory. And all you got to do is keep standing on the word. Just keep standing. When you feel like giving up and you feel like you're about to fall down, it's okay to fall down on your knees and tell God, for God I live, for God I'm willing to die. God, I've been going through the troubles. I've been going through the trials. But in the midst of the storm, I heard when Peter walked out on the water, God, you said, come to me. He had enough sense in his mind that so I'll walk to Jesus. The rest of them stayed in the boat. But Jesus was walking in the midst of a storm. And the storm began to cease when he got into the boat. I want you to know today, don't worry about your storms of life. Though the storms keep on raging, God said he would stand by you. When the storms keep on coming, God said he would stand by you. All you got to do is keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Keep holding on. Keep holding on. Keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Then he goes on to say, though you look for them, he said you're going to sometimes try to look for your enemy to find out where they at, where you're hiding it. God said, don't worry about your enemy. So you're going to look for them. And they will be gone. That's great news. That's shouting news. To know when I look for the enemy, I know that my God took care of him. See, I don't worry about the enemy no more. Because I got the greatest conqueror on my side. And the Bible tells me that Jesus is the commander of the host. That Jesus will show up in the battlefield. That Jesus will lead his people into victory. I don't care what's going on in your life. Today I claim the victory all over your life today. Come, I know that God will show up in the nick of time. I know God will. He will deliver you. I know God will set you free from the storm. I know God will break the chains off your life. I know God will. Hallelujah. 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 I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. He did it for me. He did it for my daddy. He did it for my mama. He did it for my sisters and my brothers. I know he'll do it for you today. All you got to do is call on him. Just call on him. Just call on him. Call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. And God will. He'll show up. He'll show out. He'll show up. He'll show out. He'll show you how powerful he is. How strong he is. How wise he is. In the midst of your problems. When the enemy comes in like a flood. God said keep on standing. Just keep on standing. 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 On the promises of God. Keep on standing. God would never leave you. He'll never turn his back on you. Keep on standing when your mind is confused. When you're tossing and turning all night long. When it seems like the pillows keep on rolling. The waves keep on tossing. Problems keep on getting bigger. God said the mountains keep blocking your way. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. 
Because when you stand in Jesus, he promises he will lead you in victory. He'll lead you in victory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord. 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 Sometimes you got to cry in the midnight hour. Lord. I'm crying out to you, Jesus. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. God said, I'll draw the tears from your eyes. I'll rock you in the bosom of my arms. Because I love you. I love you. With an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep on standing. Keep on holding to God's hand. The more you hold on to him, the tighter his hand becomes. So the enemy starts tug of war with you. He's pulling and pulling and pulling. God says, you keep holding on. Because I'm not going to let you go. Sometimes we feel like we're the end of our rope. We are the last stroke of the hour in our life. With the last string on that rope. And we're just about to fall. Oh, shanta, kata, oh, shanta. God said, that's when I catch you. When you at the last string of holding on. About to lose your mind. About to lose your hope. Your faith is failing you. God says, I got you. 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 Don't worry about that thing no more. I got you. Yes, he does. He got that thing in your life. The thing that hurt you the most when your loved ones turned their back on you. Did it happen? When they ridiculed and scarred your name, he said, I got you. When they thought everything I can do to you, it's going to break you down to nothing. God says, I got you. In that place where God says, your despairing cry. He says, I got you. He says, I got you. Because I know what you're going through. I know the thing that's hurting you. I know the thing that's been weighing on your spirit. I know the thing that seemed like it's a thorn in your flesh. I remember Paul crying out to God for three times to remove the thorn in his flesh. Because of the surpassing knowledge he received from the Lord. God says some of you are in the same position when God's been speaking into your life. He's been giving you a rhema word, a revelation. And it seems like the more God pours into you, the worse things get in your life. God said, <laughs> my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. <laughs> so my grace is your ability that I have in me to help you in that area, to fix that in your life, to change that in your life. He said, my grace is sufficient. And the word means sufficient means more than enough. Everything you need, God said, my grace is more than enough to handle it. And he says, as you cry out, that thorn is not going to move. He said, but I'm going to do something about that thorn. I'm going to use that thorn in your life. He said, because the thorn is there for a reason to keep you from getting puffed up. That thorn in your life 
is a reason he's there to keep from getting prideful and stubborn, haughty. Then Paul got a revelation. He said, then I rather glory in my weaknesses. <laughs> I rather glory in my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest on me. So all over the room today, would you lift your hands? God says that enemy that has come against your finances, that's come against your family, that's come against your health, came against your mind. He says, I know about it. I can handle it. You can't handle it. No matter how you try, you can't handle it. But in the name of Jesus, God says, let it go. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. I'm going to fix it. Matter of fact, I call those things that be not as though they already were. So by faith, he says, I already done it. That thing you believe in God for, that child God said you believe in him for, to fix his life, God says, it's already done. That problem, you can't seem to solve it. The worse it gets, God says, it's already done. So Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, lifting our hands as a symbolization of surrenderance. God, we're crying out for your mercy, for your grace, for your compassion, for more of you, God, to flood our hearts with more of your power, more of your presence, that you would now, God, endow us. Let it fall upon us, God, a fresh anointing in those areas of our lives where the enemy has tormented us, God, has hurt us, even scarred us, wounded us, brought bitterness and anger in those specific areas, God. Send your anointing to heal and deliver. And I thank you, Lord God. As we believe, where there's two or three gathered in your name, you say you're in the midst. So it's more than two in this room, God. More than three. And Lord God, we come in corporately seeking your face for you to have your God-like way in our lives. And we know God with confidence, with an assurance that when we leave this place, we will leave changed, we will leave motivated, we will even leave stirred up on the inside because you're taking things out to put things in from you, God. And we thank you for the exchange factor that's taking out the darkness and you're putting in the light. In Jesus' name. I want everyone to repeat after me in this room. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for hearing me. I thank you for delivering me. Now, Lord, forgive me for my sins, for my rebellious ways, my sometimes being stubborn, sometimes being prideful, sometimes walking in rebellion. And I ask, Lord God, that you restore me now into right standing and right relationship with you. And I thank you that it is done 
It is done. Say it like you mean it. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Come on, let's give God a great big praise. Hallelujah. I know that my God will Thank lift you, up a standard against him. Amen. Let's give God a great big praise for the man of God. Amen. Amen. Look, he said the prayers. And the Bible said the prayers of the righteous are it much. You believe what you prayed that is happening for you even now? Come on, give God praise as we stand to our feet to be dismissed. I've been, uh, I've been praying over this oil that I have here at the, at the podium. And if anybody needs some oil, just let me know. We got bottles of oil. They're free to anyone. But I want to remind you that what you have been fed today, watch God manifest something great in your life in the next seven days. Come on, somebody, give God praise. Hallelujah. All hearts and minds in. Glory, glory, glory. Father, we thank you for every song. We thank you for every believer. We thank you for the souls that have been saved. And most of all, God, we thank you for the word that brought life into dark places on today. God, we pray that you would give the man of God back the strength that he has poured out in this place. But now, God, as we go from this place, but never from your presence, may you rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. Let the church say amen. amen. Now, remember, let the people know that watches uh, Facebook to get their, they can get their crackers and cranberry juice. And we all going to do this live on next Sunday, communion. Amen. I want to open the doors of the church. I forgot to do that. If anyone came with that mind to join, you may do so at this time. Amen. I want to say it's good to see our neighbors. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, man. <laughs> amen. 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 Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Amen. How long y'all been here? I'm going to offer you the right hand of fellowship.